In the last part of this lecture, we will talk about quantity controls or quotas. A quantity control or quota is an upper limit on the quantity of some good that can be bought or sold. The amount of a good that can be legally transacted is the quota limit. An example is the taxi medallion system in New York. Your book goes into a lot of detail about the taxi medallion system. I will keep it simple for the purposes of this um, lecture and the demonstration and the examples here, but go ahead and read through the example in your book. It gives you a lot more details on that. Um, a license gives its owner the right to supply a good. So a license is a, another type of quota or quantity control that the government can institute by limiting how many people um, are allowed to supply something. And a couple other terms to know here are demand price and supply price. So the demand price of a given quantity is the price at which consumers will demand that quantity. And the supply price of a given quantity is the price at which producers will supply that quantity. So let's go ahead and apply these new terms to this example here. So this graph shows the market for taxi rides um, in New York City in absence of government controls. So according to this data, the equilibrium price of a taxi ride is $5 and 10 million rides per year um, is the equilibrium quantity. The taxi medallion system quite simply creates a quota on the number of rides that can be given in a year. So the way it works is um, you have to have a medallion to be able to operate a taxi in New York City, which essentially you know, puts a cap on how many taxi rides, it kind of translates into a cap on how many rides can be given per year. So that's the way we're going to represent that in this graph here. So let's just say that um, the way that that taxi medallion system translates is by capping the number of rides per year at 8 million. Okay, that's the quota limit, 8 million rides per year. And you can see that at that quota limit, um, Consumers are willing to pay $6 per ride if 8 million rides per year will be provided based on the demand schedule. And producers are willing to provide 8 million rides per year for $4 a ride. So the demand price at the quota limit is $6 and the supply price is $4. So producers aren't stupid, right? They're gonna charge six dollars a ride because they can because consumers are willing to pay even though they would be willing to do them for four dollars so there's like a two dollar difference here and um, that two dollar difference is the amount of money that the taxi drivers earn just for having the medallion so this wedge then is placed between the demand price and the supply price at the quota limit which will result in this dead weight loss here. Again, another um, representation of inefficiency in the market. Okay, so let's look at some more details here. A quantity controller quota drives a wedge between the demand price and supply price of a good, so the price paid by buyers ends up being higher than that received by sellers. So again, in the example, buyers were willing to pay $6 per ride, sellers were willing to provide them for four dollars per ride so the difference between those two prices that two dollars is actually called quota rent so that's the earnings that accrue to the license holder from ownership of the right to sell the good it is equal to the market price of the license when the licenses are traded all right and some of the costs of quantity controls are dead weight loss and we just showed that on the graph because some mutually beneficial transactions don't occur so there's loss of some producer and consumer surplus in this situation and um, incentive for illegal activities so again black markets could um, could you know be started and and create illegal market activity so in conclusion that's our last slide Ooh, in conclusion Price and quantity controls will cause inefficiencies in markets. So um, from an economist's point of view, again, um, we're not arguing 
for or against these controls because there's many good reasons for setting some of these price and quantity controls. Um, but I guess the argument that I would make is, as an economist, please know what the predictable secondary effects are and um, please please uh, be conscious of the inefficiencies that will result in the markets as a result of these price and quantity controls. All right, and that is it.